Our story today begins in 1949. Shortly after the finding of the stone maps, which had received massive publication all over the United States, and many people become enamored with finding gold and stuff of that nature. And there was a gentleman by the name of Henry Buterlin. I'm not pronouncing that quite right, but um, he became enamored with uh, the thoughts of finding gold, and he came out and started searching in the Superstition Mountains. And he found a few things that didn't mean a lot to him, but uh, he became aware through somebody of a Mexican family that had a great deal of, a great stash of documents from uh, relatives of the past. And he went to Ray, Arizona. Now Ray doesn't exist anymore, it's south of Superior. And I've only been there once. Uh, when I came out here in, in the 50s, I picked up a Marine hitchhiking just out of Amarillo. And uh, he asked for how far I was going. I told him I was going to Mesa. And he said, great, I, I live at Ray, not very far from there. Well, when we got to Superior, it was about 11.30 at night. So I drove down to Ray and took him home. And he insisted that I stay with these family, this Mexican family. And uh, the, they fed us breakfast the next morning and I bid them adieu and never saw them again. Well, Henry went down and found the Mexican family, a different one, of course, and they accepted him uh, with open arms and he explored their Bible and the documents that they had. And um, uh, it was a treasure trove from a great grandfather that had worked in the silver mines in Sonora and uh, had been involved in some other uh, explorations. And he ran across a, a drawing of nothing but lines on a piece of paper. And the family had no idea what it was about, so they let him have it. And he took this drawing and uh, he studied it and studied it. And he couldn't figure out what uh, one symbol on the, the drawing meant until he realized that he had run across a cactus out in the superstitions that had a stone driven in it in all four sides. And uh, it dawned on him that that symbol on the map was this cactus that he had found. So he got contacted Jesse Mullins, who was 75 at the time and was a pioneer of Arizona, a brother to Hart Mullins, and I knew both these people. Uh, I, you can go to the story that we done on uh, the rock house in Queen Valley, where I worked running cattle for a while, and where I met uh, Jesse and Hart, who took my dad and I up to the, some of the claims they had at Elephant Butte and Buzzard's Roost, and then we went up to Bayou Butte, and uh, that story you can, you can watch for yourself. Anyway, Jesse looked at this drawing, this, uh, this map, you might say, and he thought he recognized where this area was. And he told Henry the story of a fellow that we only know as the name of Wagner. Now, Jesse's father was a stagecoach driver. And this Mr. Wagner used to get on his stage with a, with a suitcase, and he'd hand the suitcase to Frank, and Frank would put it up on top of the of the coach, and he and Mr. Wagner got out at Queen, uh, the Queen Valley area out by Florence Junction. And three days later, he was waiting when the stage came back, and when he handed the suitcase up to, to Mr. Mullins to put it on top of the coach, the, the suitcase weighed something terrible, uh, much more than what it was when. Uh, when he uh, came, when he gave it to him the first time. Anyway, Jesse was aware from, through, from his father that Mr. Wagner was going up Whitlow Canyon. And um, they were able to, to trace uh, on this map uh, some of the direction that uh, Mr. Wagner was going. But anyway, uh, Jesse and, uh, and Henry uh, had found these uh, seven filled in pits uh, in a close proximity of each other. 
And although uh, Henry had excavated one down 18 feet, they never, it never really came to anything. Now, I have a copy of that map that was given to Henry by that Mexican family. I also have three other copies of that map, and they're all different. And I want to show you a picture of another Indian hieroglyphic out in the superstitions that has been called the master map, and two other maps drawn off of that one, and they're all different. All these maps, and they're all different. The, to finish the story though, uh, when, when Henry turned 80, he wanted to make one more trip in the Superstition Mountains. And Henry was friends with Clay Wurst. And they made this trip uh, with Feldman packing them in and they spent a few days out there reminiscing about all the great fun they had in the Superstition searching for the Lost Dutchman Mine. Henry was uh, married, he had three children, and uh, the, his wife would stay with, his, uh, with her folks while he was out in the mountains at Desert Sage, is where we, well, close to what we call Twin Knolls, about uh, five miles from here. One of their children, Susan, became Miss California. Another boy uh, became, uh, has a um, production studio in Hollywood and his last son was none other than James Brolin, the movie star, who was married to Barbara Streisand. And the thing that I want to know, what was in that suitcase? Is it just another mystery of the Superstition Mountains? Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.